When you hear ISO 20022, what do you instantly think of? Odds are it's probably Ripple, Stellar, Algorand, Quant, or maybe Hedera. Now, this doesn't mean their tokens are ISO 20022 compliant. Because after all, ISO 20022 is a legacy financial data messaging standard. Though it does allow a specific network to be utilized within a common financial standard. But one network that never gets brought up in this conversation is Casper Network. And through the developments, we've seen Casper increasingly progress further towards the financial space. From joining the Actus Foundation to build standards and financial contracts, to collaborating with Ariadne in a joint venture to build out Nucleus Finance. It would seem that Casper is going along pretty nicely at building real-world regulated financial applications on a public blockchain. And paired with their network hosting upgradable smart contracts, hybrid permissions for businesses to find the settings that best fit them, and even cross-permission swaps in their collaboration with IBM. This brings a lot of potential as to the capabilities of industry-grade financial applications on Casper. But just how deeply involved within the financial industry is Casper already? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. So let's talk about the standard ISO 20022 itself a little further. We now understand that it's a financial data standard for legacy systems, and its purpose is to replace ISO 15022, which is the current standard. Now what this does is enable a lot more data to fit into a specific message, which means there will be less costly errors in the industry with more data accuracy on each transaction. And in return, it indirectly enables the industry to process things like payments much more smoothly. It also supports a wide range of newer financial products like real-time payments and enhanced reporting capabilities. And while the standard itself was actually founded all the way back in 2004 by another ISO standard. This is ISO TC68. And this is the ISO standard for financial services as a whole. So now that we've got some history and details on ISO 20022, Let's further look into Casper. When we look at Casper directly from a fundamentals perspective, they seem like quite the multi-purpose blockchain. Simply put, they've got it all. You want tokenized intellectual property? They've got that with IPWE. Tracing products in the supply chain with digital identities? WiseKey is using Casper for exactly that purpose. Collaborating with government infrastructure to create a blockchain network for a city? Believe it or not, they've done so with Chengdu Chain through BSN China, and they're even in talks with the government of Telangana down in India to do the same thing. And they've even got some work in the luxury spirits industry through Metacast, which believe it or not, is a $200 billion industry, which is just crazy to me. You're telling me that the market for luxury liquor is in the hundreds of billions? Well, if that's what the market values it, I really can't say much. But of all their industry purposed applications, there's one geared specifically towards financial contracts, and that's Nucleus Finance. They're an application built on Casper with the aim to secure, standardize, and tokenize financial contracts. Now this is sort of an ironic concept, but as the financial industry begins to add more technological systems and software into their infrastructure, one would think that this enables a more seamless and simple procedure. And that'd kind of be the reason why you'd integrate all these technologies in the first place, right? But it actually becomes all that much more complex. Because now every program and system has to translate data to communicate with each other. This in return makes the industry overall much more inefficient than it should be. And so financial contracts can be represented by loan agreements, credit card agreements, derivative contracts, bond agreements, swap agreements, insurance policies, employee stock options, and a long list of others. Each of these are some of the core pillars that make up the financial sector today. And with the evolving convergence of smart contracts in fintech, this enables the potential for smart financial contracts, which can bring forth the abilities for a much more automated and seamless financial system across different networks, technologies, and use cases. But the current problem lies in the fact that these financial contracts are currently represented as thick paper documents written up by lawyers without any mathematical expression or financial utility, which in return is heavily limiting what a financial contract could bring. And this is exactly what Nucleus Finance, built on Casper, is looking to unlock. As we previously mentioned, this is a joint venture between both Casper and Ariadne. 
We of course know about Casper, and if you don't, I'll link a Casper introduction right up here for you to get all caught up. But let's look at Eridane and see what they're about. Much like the vision for Nucleus Finance, the goals of Eridane align directly together. As Eridane's goal is to build out next generation banking solutions by utilizing smart contracts. And when we look at the Eridane team, we can see two interesting points. The founder for Eridane is actually also the president for Nucleus Finance, which is a pretty good sign to see, hinting at the fact that they're taking this joint venture pretty seriously. And we also see Ralph Kubli, who's a board member of the Casper Association, is actually also the partner and blockchain advisor for Eridane. Now both Eridane and Casper are members contributing to the Actus Foundation. But what exactly is ACTUS? So ACTUS stands for Algorithmic Contract Types Unified Standards. In simpler terms, they work on standardizing financial data, specifically in financial contracts. In fact, 98% of all financial contracts are actually already under this standard, which is pretty significant to say the least. So it's pretty clear that ACTUS is already quite an established name in the industry both for legacy and the future of finance we're soon to witness. But how established is Actus exactly? Well, when we look at universal standards for any industry, who's the first name that usually pops up? The answer should be ISO. After all, this is the International Organization for Standardization. And as we discussed, they're already working on two specific financial standards in ISO TC68 and ISO 20022. When you look on the ISO website, you can actually see Actus is directly listed as a member when we check out the organizations that are working in cooperation with ISO. In fact, they have a category A liaison with ISO standard TC68. So there's two categories of liaisons within ISO standards. Being a category A liaison is the highest level of collaboration of an external body that's working with ISO standards. As this category allows organizations to directly contribute to specific topics, gain access to relevant documents, nominate experts for participation in working groups, and even invitations to meetings. And then there's the category B liaison, where you only get the progress reports on activity. So seeing Actus in a class A liaison with ISO TC68 is definitely saying something. And as we previously discussed, this is the standard that initially founded and oversees ISO 20022. Given that TC68 is the standard for all of financial services, and ISO 20022 is specifically for financial data, it would make sense why Actus is involved. We can see that this liaison is specifically for TC68 Subcommittee 9, which is the standard committee for information exchange of financial services. Again, this directly aligns with what Actus is doing with financial standards. After all, much of financial contracts is largely data exchange across different entities anyways. So it only makes sense that Actus, which is a financial contracts data standards body, would have a category A liaison with ISO TC68, which creates standards on all financial services while also founding the ISO standard for financial data. If you really think about it, ISO 20022 is really just an extension of ISO TC68. Given that TC68 being the standard for financial services encompasses everything we're discussing anyways. And in return, this of course means that Casper Network's financial focus applications would not only be compliant to Actus's standards, but it also work in harmony with ISO TC68 standards, with ISO 20022 being one of them of course. But maybe all this hasn't been enough to convince you that Casper is playing a significant role in the future of finance. In that case, let's look to ISO 20022 itself. First is the Registration Management Group. This is the highest of the ISO 20022 registration bodies, and these guys are responsible for supervising the overall registration process and then reporting it to ISO TC68 Subcommittee 9. And again, this is the subcommittee to interchange of financial data, which is also the subcommittee that Actus has a liaison to. So it only makes sense that we also see Actus on the registration management group list, right? But that's not all. We can also see that Eridane is listed here registered as a company under Actus. And again, this is the highest supervisory board of ISO 20022. So it's definitely saying quite a bit. There's also the technical support group, and this is pretty much what it sounds like. This is a group of recognized experts in the technical implementation aspects of ISO 20022, 
And one interesting thing about this group is that they can actually also be called up by the registration management group to offer advice on issues regarding implementation. So this group definitely has to know the process of ISO 20022 inside and out, right? What do we see here? Actus is listed and registered under this list too, with the two companies registered under Actus as Taho Blue and Ariadane. Taho Blue, as you can guess, is another finance-oriented company that works with Actus, though their main focus is on risk management and finance. Now, Taho Blue doesn't actually have anything to do with this line of connections we're discussing outside of being another registered member under Actus in ISO 2022's groups, but I figured I may as well give a little background on them. And the third section in ISO 2022 is the Securities SEG group, which is responsible for supporting the standardization of ISO 20022 in securities. This can include equities, fixed incomes, and funds. Once again, we see Actus, Taho Blue, and Eridane all listed here. Only this time, Actus, the foundation itself, is also listed, rather than registered through underlying companies working with Actus like we saw with the former technical support group. So as we can see, Actus is quite a key player in the digitalization of finance as more and more of the industry turns from paper notes and contracts into raw data. Seeing this overlap in contributions with ISO is a great sign for Casper's financial focus developments moving forward. Because this simply shows that Actus and Casper aren't just working to have their applications fit ISO 20022 and Actus standards, but they're collaborating to have information exchange of financial data in contracts that comply to Actus, yet also have the data being exchanged in an ISO TC68 manner, which you could argue is just as big, if not even bigger than complying to ISO 20022 itself as TC68 being the standard for financial services encompasses all of the standards within the industry. But it's essential to remember that ISO 20022 is a legacy-focused financial standard. But to see Casper's applications building to comply with this means that applications like Nucleus Finance could be integrated and utilized within the frameworks of a financial system ran on ISO 20022. The road that Casper's taken into financial exposure has been quite a unique one to say the least. Rather than partnering up with a bunch of different banks like what we've seen from traditional fintech-oriented blockchain projects, Casper went right to the source with the Actus Foundation, in which over 95% of financial contracts are already complying to the standards set by this foundation. Partnering with banks may enable financial applications to be developed for one specific banking ecosystem, but collaborating with the foundation that enables all of these banks and financial services to work at scale opens up Casper to the entire financial ecosystem as a whole. And let's not forget that Casper had also recently collaborated with INX to tokenize their public equity. This will be the first we see of a blockchain project launching an IPO or initial public offering. But maybe more importantly, this will be one of the first ever IPOs that are done on chain through security tokenization. And with Actus Financial Standards and ISO TC68 also having a large focus on the future of finance, paired with Casper's ability to create hybrid permission environments, who knows, soon we could see security token contracts potentially being deployed on Casper Network, as this enables the global liquidity and open market benefits while keeping all the proprietary data private. This is of course a capability that Casper is able to execute thanks to their ability to clone and create specific permission networks. But we'll save the rest of that rabbit hole for another time. So what do you guys think about Casper's involvement in financial standards and the route they've taken to be collaborating with the leaders setting the standards to our digitalized financial future? This is far from the traditional path we've seen from fintech DLTs, but it's one that will open countless potential doors. Where do you guys think Casper is going next as blockchain and finance comes closer and closer to becoming a full-fledged reality? Be sure to let me know your thoughts below. And as always, if you enjoyed this breakdown, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button while turning on that ringer to stay up to date. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out tokenizer.network for my free email newsletter in addition to all my content platforms linked right in one spot. And of course, that'll be right down in the description below. But as usual guys, be sure to stay safe and keep learning. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.